Hello boys and girls, today we're going to start a new domain called Colonial Towns and Townspeople. The purpose of listening to today's story is to compare how people lived long, long time ago to how people live today. I want you to pay attention to the types of chores children did a long time ago in the colonial times if they lived on a farm. Let's go over vocabulary words. The first vocabulary word is apprentice. An apprentice is someone who works with a tradesperson to learn his or her job. For example, the boy chose to be the baker's apprentice so he can learn how to be a baker when he grows up. The next vocabulary word is churn. A wooden container with a handle designed to stir milk into butter. For example, the girl couldn't wait to open the churn and taste the butter inside. The next vocabulary word is country, an area of land with few buildings where homes are distant from another. And most of the land is made up of farms. The farmer and his family lived in the country. The next vocabulary word is trade, a job that uses special skills, knowledge, and tools. Dylan worked as an apprentice to learn the trade of blacksmithing. The next vocabulary word is tradesman, a person who works in a job that requires special skills knowledge and tools. For example, my aunt is a tradesperson because she works as a carpenter, building houses out of wood. The last vocabulary word is weave. To combine strands of thread or yarn in an alternate pattern in order to make cloth. The woman asked her daughter to help her weave pieces of yarn to make a square of cloth. Today we're going to take an imaginary trip back in time about 300 years ago to an early American farm. If you lived in the country long ago, you and your family did most of the work necessary for survival right at home. In the country, houses were far apart from one another, so you couldn't rely on neighbors or stores to get everything you needed. You had to make the most of things at home. Everything you needed, food to eat, water to drink or use for cooking and cleaning, lighten to help you see after dark, heat when it turned cold, and clothing required a lot of work by the family. Even young children had to help out because there was so much work to do. There was no electricity for lamps or lights, and there were no flashlights. The only way to see anything after it got dark was a light to light a candle that you made at home. There were no electric ovens or stoves, so you had to build a fire to heat your home and cook your meals. There were no sinks or faucets with running water inside the house, so you had to fetch any water you needed for drinking, cooking, or cleaning from the nearby creek or the well outside. There were no malls with clothing stores, so you had to make your own clothes. There were no supermarkets, so you had to grow your own vegetables, milk your own cows, and make your own cheese. Imagine doing all that work every day. At the start of a typical day in the country, the first thing a woman did was fetch wood to start the fire in the hearth or the fireplace. The hearth was the most important place in the home. Most of the chores to be done required fire, and especially in the winter. 
everyone needed to stay close to the hearth because it provided the only heat in the house. After building the fire, a country woman would mostly, most likely start her day by baking bread. Sometimes she would make her own flour by grinding on kernels of corn or wheat into fine powder. Then she would mix this flour and water with yeast, let it rise for several hours. The dough would then be put into an iron pot with a tight lid and hung over the hearth to bake or cook. One task that had to be done twice a day, no matter what, was milking the cows. This task took a long time and was usually left for children to do. Once the milk was collected, the milk that was not drunk was either made into cheese or butter. Making cheese involved a slow process of boiling and cooling the milk to produce curds or clumps of sour milk that looked sort of like cottage cheese. These curds were pressed into forms to make the cheese. To make butter, milk was left to sit until the fatty cream floated to the top. Then the cream was pour poured into a tall wooden container called a churn. A child usually had to pump the handle of the butter churn called the dasher up and down for a long time until the fat in the cream separated into butter. The leftover liquid called buttermilk was used for cooking and drinking. People in the country ate mostly vegetables and grains. They only ate meat if the men or nearby neighbors had butchered one of their animals. Because there were no refrigerators, the meat had to be preserved so it would not spoil. This was done by hanging it in strips above the fire or in a separate shed like this one called a smokehouse. The smoke from the fire dried out the meat, which was prevented, prevented spoiling. Other foods were preserved by covering them in salt, canning them, storing them in a cool, dry cellar. After all those chores were done, it was time for sewing. In colonial times, women had to make their own thread and clothing. Men and boys picked cotton from the fields and sh um, sheared the sheep. Women cleaned and dried the cotton or wool. Then women made the cotton or wool into thread or yarn. After that, they would weave the yarn into cloth to be used for clothing. Children were taught to sew and weave, usually before the age of 10, so they could help make their own clothes. Because it was so much work to make clothes, so expensive to buy new clothes in town, much of the sewing work was patched or fixed. Old clothes that had become, um, become worn out and had holes in them, holes or tears were patched up. Because children were expected to help out with every one of the, these chores, they did not have a lot of time to play. The few toys they did have, they usually made themselves. Sometimes girls made dolls like these out of parts of corn or plants. And sometimes boys called, um, carved small toys out of wood. Most boys worked the farm along their fathers, taking over the family farm when they became older. If the family lived near a large town, 
Some boys only lived at home until they were 11 or 12 years old. Then they were expected to learn a trade. Each boy would become an apprentice for several years, working with a master tradesman in town to learn his job. The country family in colonial times worked hard every day. Sometimes a trip into town was a welcome relief or break from their daily task. In town, the family was able to trade or buy things they needed so they could save the time and effort it took to make them. In the next read aloud, you will hear about what happens when a farmer took a trip to town. In the colonial times, what kinds of chores did children do on the farm? Think about that. What kind of chores did they do on the farm? Tell a grown up. Was the farm we heard about in the read aloud, the farm that exists a long time ago, one of that exists today? How can you tell? Was the farm we heard about today in town or in the country? Was this farm in the town or in the country? Do you think you would have liked living on a farm in the country hundreds of years ago? Why? or why not? Tell a grown up. Now I want you to write this sentence and complete the sentence. In the country, I see, what did you see in the country? In the country, I see blank. Finish the sentence. Have a fantastic day, boys and girls.